It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly Media Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news on deck for this midweek edition of 5.45 Live. We're going to talk plenty of politics, including heading to Montpelier to look at some of the bills. The House is pushing out of committee and over to the Senate. 2014 budget bill is a big one. Marijuana decriminalization, another hot topic. We'll touch on those. We'll head down to Washington and uh, see how sequestration really is hitting home here. So plenty of politics on this show. We'll also talk about some more down-to-earth things like a gravel road advisory from the town here, the winter parking ban lifted, uh, plenty of municipal happenings, and we'll check in with our seven-town summary as well. All that and plenty more as we jam-pack another midweek edition here on 545 Live. So if you've got the time and that attention span key, uh, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Last week at the State House was uh, the self-designated crossover mm -hmm. date. That's the time for us to move bills from committee to the floor. This week we've been on the floor for quite a while trying to pass those bills so we can get them over to the Senate. Welcome back to this April 9th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. That's footage of Wyndham County District 4 Representative Mike Merwicki talking with District 3 Rep Tristan Tolino during a special web stream edition of Mike's TV show Montpelier Connection, a series of interviews aimed at bringing south-stranded Wyndham Countyites uh, a little closer to the action in Montpelier to stay attuned with the work of their elected representatives. As Mike mentioned, the House has now uh, made the move to flush bills out of the committee and onto the House floor where they can be subsequently nudged on over to the Senate. 2014 budget bill, of course, one of the season's biggest and most hotly debated pieces of legislation. And while it was one that cleared the House after a six-hour debate that kept reps northbound until 11 p.m. last Monday, many sources in Montpelier say the bill will move much less swiftly through the Senate. For uh, more details on that, you can catch Mike Merwicki on his latest edition of Montpelier Connection. You can stream it at brattleboro.tv.org and watch it two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. Now one of the bills looking to make its way into law this go-round in the legislature is a decriminalization bill, which would look to drastically lessen charges for marijuana possession and address issues like denial of student loans for pot charge bearing college seekers, to name just one of many. Uh, though advocates of full legalization say decriminal decriminalizing marijuana isn't enough, with states like Oregon and Washington taking on their rising prison rates and tax shortfalls by fully legalizing marijuana. Now, advocates of the controversial plant are hoping that decrim laws are just the beginning for the state of Vermont. Still, uh, for a state bearing the second highest rate of addiction treatment in the country, recovery specialists and mental health professionals are hesitant to jump on the pot bandwagon just yet, uh, citing marijuana's poor track record for those in recovery, struggling teenagers, and those uh, coping with depression, just to name a few of the cautions in the move to make smoking pot acceptable behavior. Many people discredit the idea of a sort of a gateway drug, although at the same time they will say that there's some kind of correlation, so something's going on that uh, is at least along a, a similar path, a parallel path as far as marijuana use and, and, and other drugs. Moving on among the properties ravaged during Tropical Storm Irene was that of the State Hospital in Waterbury. This has forced the state to look elsewhere to house their state hospital patients, including down here to Brattleboro and the Brattleboro Retreat. And this law should be helped along by the $5.3 million addition, which Governor Shumlin was in town to cut the ribbon on at the Brattleboro Retreat yesterday where my often co-captain William Joseph Bushy was there to, with his camera to gather footage. This is the beginning of a long journey, and we're looking forward to finally providing mental health patients in Vermont with the quality of care that they have deserved, accompanied with the quality of facility that we have been missing. You ready? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Next, sequestration came up for more than a uh, more than a few times at this year's annual Brattleboro Representative Town Meeting, but the deadly buzzword responsible for an approximate 9% cut to the federal budget, uh, and nearly every government agency is reaching its long fingers into the pockets of local residents now, and for those of us still hoping to hold the sequester at a far, as just another theoretical political device, the bubble won't last much longer, with stories of agencies thrown into the hopper continuing, like that of the Brattleboro Housing Authority, whose Section 8 tenants uh, had their aid cut at the hands of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. 
uh, where yesterday a detailed article in the Brattleboro Reformer came out, which included an interview with BHA director Christine Hart, who urged residents to consider this real money being taken off the table. With the sequestration, we will literally be out of money. Mm -hmm. We don't. We aren't we getting enough to run no. the program at its current size, and its current size is almost well. It's Moving on, we'll talk Bernie for, for a moment and his latest phrase, too big to jail. Now, he's often criticized Wall Street uh, as being perceived to be too big to fail, a problem that led the country into a $700 billion taxpayer bailout. Uh, but now he says some of the executives behind that catastrophe uh, need to serve time for their uh, crimes against the American public. However, uh, everyone is, seems to be uh, running scared hoping uh, not to add to uh, impending economic crisis, uh, but he says no one is too big to jail. The theory is that if you're just a regular person, you commit a crime, you go to jail. You're head of a Wall Street company. Your power is so great. The tentacles of that company are so great that if you are prosecuted and there's destabilization in that company, it can have worldwide or national implications. Mr. President, that is an issue we have got to think long and hard about. We are supposed to be a country of law. All right, moving on, a few more things to wrap up in the state capitol. Now as the buzz dies down on Governor Shumlin's finalized divorce, things like the spike in the debate over the S-14 proposed fair share union bill, which would requ require an additional 2,500 teachers and municipal employees to pay as much as 80% of new union dues, or uh, say the state's budget cuts to family welfare programs, state highway projects, and many others have already come under fire from those on and off the Senate floor. Uh, we've got uh, footage of Governor Peter Shumlin talking about some of these issues. We will work with every current reach-up recipient to get rid of the obstacles of prosperity. It's, this is a basic issue of human dignity. We have a system that locks you, traps you. There isn't a progressive, a a Democrat or a Republican, an independent, or a person with a heart on this Valentine's Day who can look me in the eye and say, you got a great system now. It locks people in poverty, and if you get a job, you get punished. All those meetings in their entirety can be found at brettlebrotv.org, and they show regularly uh, two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. Moving on, now a few more things of municipal note around this here town of Brattleboro. The winter parking ban has been lifted, but in its place, uh, the town has put into effect a gravel road advisory with a release issued on the town's website, brettlebrotv.org, detailing conditions of note on gravel roads. Uh, with some wares and wins for exercising caution, but for those residents relying on back roads for their daily commutes, not to fear, says Brett Public Works Director Steve Barrett, who says his crew has got the gear and the know-how to keep Brattleboro's roads in line. Each time uh, a truckload uh, goes out of here, that's approximately seven yards of sand, just to give you an idea of how much we use. And in a year's time, we use approximately 4,000 yards. So. You know, if you do the math, that's quite a few dump truck loads that actually go out on the back roads. Well, it's become customary on our Tuesday midweek edition of 545 Live to highlight some of the new programs showing on BCTV. Of course, you can catch it on Comcast Cable, channels 8 and 10, and subsequently all local programming to watch uh, at your leisure at brattlebrotv.org. All right, we'll start with footage from Maria Dominguez, hardworking BCTV volunteer of the Safe and Greens uh, Fukushima second year anniversary commemorating nuclear refugees uh, after that tsunami earthquake and nuclear meltdown. It was their Voices of Fukushima. People were told, no problem, stay in your homes for a month. They weren't told that they were right in the, in the major plume of the radioactivity. And we've introduced uh, the From the Archive. This is courtesy of Harold Holm, our BCTV producer, who's been archiving our uh, long dormant VHS tapes and content uh, specialist Jeff Mastroni, content manager for BCTV, who's been finding some of the best of these archived programs and putting them on. We've got an 03 piece here. This is the Dummerston Maple Syrup Tour it's showing this week. This way people can see and, and really get a feel for what's going on. Right, exactly. Uh, those both show on uh, Channel 8, and of course everything uh, that you're seeing here can be watched at BrattleboroTV.org. All right, I'll uh, leave you to enjoy the rest of the week. We'll be back Friday at 5.45 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. That's it for me. Night, everybody.